let us try to solve this 1D bar problem using ANSYS workbench. Now we have a bar here which is fixed on the left hand side but on the right hand side it has got some weird boundary condition. Uh, it is free to uh, expand up to 0.12 mm okay, or it is free to deform up to this 0.12 mm and after that it will face a rigid boundary condition here. Uh, this is the solution uh, by finite element method. I have manually solved it so that we can verify our answers later on. You can convert this beam problem into a problem of two elements, two bar elements, element one and element two. These are its nodal degrees of freedom. Uh, these are its forces, all right? These are the, uh, its length, uh, length of two elements. And then we know uh, the procedure to solve this problem. There shouldn't be any difficulty to solve this problem uh, by finite element method. Uh, this is our stiffness matrix. We have two elements here, element and one and element two, all right? So finally, you should get a global stiffness matrix of this kind. Uh, this will be a nodal displacement matrix. This will be your load vectors or a force vectors. Uh, finally, after forming this equilibrium equation and applying the boundary conditions, that is u1 is 0 and u3 is 0 0.12. Why? Because here u1 is, this node is fixed here, so u1 will be 0. But u3 is free to move up to 0 0.12 mm. Therefore, u3 will be 0 0.12. And after applying these boundary conditions to this uh, uh, met, uh, equation, uh, ultimately you should get this value of u2 as 0 0.81 mm. That is the displacement of this node will be 0 0.81 mm. And that is what we'll be very checking uh, on ANSYS workbench, all right? Uh, similarly, if you go uh, to find the stresses in the element by this uh, equation, you'll get the stress in element, uh, the stresses in element one as uh, 1080 megapascals and the stress in element two as minus 920 megapascals. The minus obviously tells us that this uh, segment or this element will be under compression so the compressive stresses are denoted as minus this will be under expansion this segment so the tensile stresses are uh, shown as positive compressive stresses are shown as negative uh, then similarly uh, by using this equation we can find the reaction so r1 will get it as minus 3 324 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 newtons uh, or minus 324 kilonewtons and r3 will get it as minus 276 kilonewton why minus because the force applied is in positive x direction so the reaction forces obviously will be in negative x direction so therefore it will be uh, minus all right so all these things will verify now uh, by solving this problem using ANSYS workbench so what do i do i'll go to my ANSYS workbench page from here i'll drag and drop the static structural in this project schematic uh, it will take some time uh, the first thing is let us uh, define our engineering material right click on this and then say edit uh, we already have a structural steel here but uh, we'll define a uh, new material here i'll call it as a new material you can give any name that you want uh, it will ask now for some properties uh, since we are doing uh, linear uh, analysis the material since our material is isotropic i'll take this isotropic elasticity i'll drag, drag and drop it here it is asking me now these values of young's modulus and poisons ratio and i think it is given to us right young's modulus is given to us uh, it is 200 gpa so since it is 200 gpa that means it is 200 e9 200 multiplied by 10 to the power 9 pascals because here my units are in pascals poisons ratio really doesn't matter here in case of one dimensional problems but anyways we'll give it uh, value of 0 0.3 so this is all about uh, defining the material uh, then we shall close this let us create the geometry now i'll right click and i'll use design modeler okay i won't go with a space claim i'll use design modeler to create the geometry uh, or uh, design modeler this window will look somewhat like this let us create our geometry on xy plane i'll say look at now the units here are in meters okay if you draw a line from this point to this point it will be approximately of 20 meter length i don't want that long line so what i will do better to change these units to millimeters all right i'll go to sketching i'll take this line option from this point i will draw one line okay and then from this one uh, this point i will draw one more line why i have why I have done this is because if you see here i have i need one point here later on to apply a force okay so what i have done i have drawn one line from this point to this point i have drawn one more line from this point to this point and what are what are the lengths of these two lines now it should be 150 mm and 
150 mm so let us do that let us define the dimensions okay i'll go i'll click on general i'll click this line and then i'll click on this line and then i'll get here two dimensions now h1 and h2 each of each should be of length 150 mm right so i think our sketching is done if it is going out of your screen what you can do either you can scroll your mouse or just press f7 so that it fits your screen okay so after this what we need to do as we know in ncs i mean after later on while doing the analysis it will uh, ncs will not understand your sketches we need to convert the sketches into line bodies how do we do that go to concept go to lines from sketches and then select this line select this line say apply and then say generate now ncs has created the line bodies okay uh, but uh, if you if you see here it has created line body although it has created line body but here it is asking for cross section because we have not defined any cross section right in this problem it is given that it has a cross section uniform cross section of 300 mm square uh, along its length okay along its entire length it has got a uniform cross section of 300 mm square all right so let us define this cross section what how to define the cross section go to concept go to cross section go to rectangular cross section you can also take a circular cross section since it is a one one dimensional problem it will not really matter whether you take a rectangular cross section or a circular cross section since it is a bar problem right so for a for a simplicity for the purpose of simplicity i will take rectangular cross section and then i want here a cross section of 300 mm square right it is of 300 mm square so what i will do i will change this dimension to 30 okay so this is 30 and this is 10 which will give me a cross section of 300 mm square again i'll press f7 so that this fits to the screen okay so this is a cross section of 300 mm square i think this is enough so what i will do i'll go to line body again and i will what i will do i'll assign this rectangle one to this line body you can check that you can go to now view and cross section you will see that this cross section is assigned to this line body I think that's all uh, in case of uh, uh, modeling as such. Okay, uh, we don't have to do anything more here. Now again, I'll go to my project uh, page, project schematic page, and then now we need to go to FE model. Okay, so right click on this and then say edit. It will take some time to open the uh, mechanical window. All right, uh, let us see how much time it takes depending upon your processor and ram it will take some time okay it has opened so our mechanical window is ready our mechanical uh, window for static structural is ready this is our line body right this is that point which is visible here to us okay now let us see uh, what all things we need to do uh, i'll go to geometry i'll go to line body all right and then uh, by default it will have a static structural material uh, i mean structural steel material we need to change it to our material which was created as new material all right so i have assigned a new material here uh, you need not do anything here in geometry imports all right uh, material uh, we have defined it as new material all right and then let us mesh it okay just right click and then say generate mesh i think the default mesh should be good enough all right uh, this is a default mesh which we are getting again if you go to home and then i mean if you go to display and then if you uncheck these thick shells and beams you will get here uh, uh, you will get here to see proper nodes and elements all right so i think this mesh is um, good enough uh, we, we can go ahead with the mesh now what about the boundary conditions uh, as we know boundary condition plays a very important role here as i said uh, we already discussed here at this node it is fixed but here at this node it is not fixed it is free to move uh by a distance of 0.12 mm in along x direction right so let us do that uh let us uh fix this point let, let us let us let us fix this point now all right uh how to fix it you can go to environment all right you can go to this fixed boundary condition uh select this node and then say apply okay so you have fixed you have fixed this node but at this node, we do not want to fix it, right? This node, we do not want to fix it. So what we need to do here is, we need to take a displacement boundary condition. Now, this is the only uh, new thing that we are learning in this exercise, right? We need to take a displacement boundary condition, apply it at this node, okay? And then say, apply. 
all right just be careful that if you are using a older version of ensys then you need to make sure that you you switch it to vertex so that you nicely get to select these points all right if it is on line uh, or a age selection it will not allow you to select these points okay so you need to nicely uh, toggle between uh, vertex or edges whenever it is required okay now please see here that uh, in 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 case of x direction that uh, it is free to move by a distance of 0.12 mm. So you need to do this, okay? Uh, be careful with the units again. This is taking in terms of meters, right? So what we'll do, we'll change the units to uh, mm, okay? So the it is free to move in uh, x direction by a distance of 0.12 mm. So that is what I have defined here. In along y direction, we are not allowing it to move. So I'll make it zero. Along z direction, we are not allowing it to move. So I'll make this as zero. So these are our essential boundary conditions. Which are those? Uh, those two essential boundary conditions are: it is fixed here, it is it is having a fixed support at this point A, and it is having a displacement support at this point B. It is free to move uh, in along x direction by a distance of 0.1 to mn. So now let us define the force here. Uh, how to define the force? Again, go to environment, click on force, uh, select this point. Okay, select this point. Say apply change this to component and then along x direction it is subjected to a force of 600 kilo newton right so 600 e3 newton right so along x component you need to type 600 e3 so that will be nothing but 600 kilo newton so i think that's it we have uh, nicely defined all the uh, boundary condition essential as well as natural boundary condition but then we'll ask now software to give us uh, what all things. I'll ask uh, the software to give us directional deformation. I want deformation along x direction. Just make sure that this orientation is x axis. Okay. Also, let us go to the beam tools. Okay. Uh, this will give me the uh, direct stresses in element one and element two. So at this stage, we are good to solve this uh, problem. Let us see uh, whether it is giving us any error. Hopefully, it shouldn't give because we have done all the things properly, I feel. Uh, let us see what it tells. It will take some time to solve depending upon, again, your processor and RAM capacities. Uh, let us see. Uh, all right. Uh, let me align this properly. And then if I click on directional deformation, it is telling us that the maximum deformation is 0.81 mm at this location right at this point so which is what uh, we had seen in case of uh, manual calculations also right here we had got the deformation at second at node 2 as 0.81 mm right here at node 2 we had got the deformation as 0.81 mm so i feel the results what we have got is uh, are correct let us look at the uh, stresses so in this entire element it is showing the stress as maximum stress of 1080 megapascals, right? Whereas in this element, it is showing us the stress of minus 920 megapascals. Why minus? Because it obviously this will be compressive stresses. Okay, so, and then obviously since we had applied a load here, there will be some change in the stresses at that point because as we know, stress does not remain constant always. It changes from point to point, uh, where, especially where we apply the loads. Okay, so therefore there is some fluctuations here, just neglect it. So in this element, we are getting the stress of 180 megapascals, whereas in this element, we are getting the stress of 920 megapascals. And then if I check with our manual calculations, we are getting exactly these values as 1080 megapascals and minus 920 megapascals. So that means uh, even we are getting the stresses to be uh, correct. Okay, only thing is now we need to find the resultant, uh, I mean the reaction forces. So we can go to, I think, probe and then we can go to force reactions. Okay, so it will ask you at which point you want to find the force reaction, at which boundary condition. So I want it here at this point, right? This is nothing but our fixed support. So I'll click on fixed support. Okay, I also want to find the uh, force reaction at this end, which is nothing but our displacement uh, and okay, so boundary condition was given as displacement and then we'll right click on this and then say evaluate all results So let us see the force reaction at this point. So at this point we're getting those value as Minus 3.24 multiplied by 10 to the power 5. Okay, so let us check this value 
this is uh, minus 324 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 Newton, which is same as what we have got here, right? It is nothing but minus 324 multiplied by 10 to the power 3. Uh, if you shift these two decimals, it will be minus 324 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 Newton. Okay, and then similarly the force reaction too, that is at this end, we are getting it as minus 276 multiplied by 10 to the power 3. Let us check minus 276 multiplied by 10 to the power 3. So we have got pretty uh, accurate values here. Okay, so this is how you can take care of this kind of problems wherein we cannot directly apply the fixed boundary conditions, but we have to apply a displacement boundary condition and we have validated our results, right?